your hands and say, I depend on you. Lord, I depend on you. I depend on you. I depend on you. My life depends on you. The wisdom at work in my life depends on you. My destiny depends on you. My understanding depends on you. The scope of my existence depends on you. You are not one of the many things in my life. You are everything in my life. Lift your voice and begin to worship him. You are not one of the important things in my life. Oh, I depend on you. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. It says in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Verse 7 of Proverbs says, Be not wise in your own understanding. It says, Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, turn away from evil. Lord, we depend on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to begin to recount all the things that would have not been possible in your life without him. It's important for you to see how relevant God is in your life. He's not one of those factors. He is the factor. Lift your voice. And say, Lord, my breath depends on you. I'm what I am by the grace of God. What I am by the wisdom of God. You are responsible for my understanding. If there is any crown, if there is any glory, if there is any accolade, it belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, it all belongs. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh it all belongs to you. It all Father, we acknowledge you as the factor beyond our minds, beyond our efforts, beyond that which we have learned to do. You are that one great reason why we are what we are, where we are, doing what we are doing. You are the wisdom behind this ministry. You are the grace behind our exploits. We acknowledge you. You are the mighty one. We depend on you and we will let the world know that our success is tied to our dependence on you. Keep us in that position, oh God, where we will never see the need to move out and do things without your presence, your guidance, your wisdom, your strength. In you we make our boast all day long. For without you we are nothing and we can do nothing. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for tonight again. We are gathered in the presence of the living God. Teach us. We submit to your wisdom. O oh, great rabbi of the ages, we submit to your wisdom. Build us. Teach us the principles of the kingdom. Bless us, O oh God, and lift us up. Let us by revelation rise to levels where we will become relevant. Thank you, Jesus. We vow to give you the glory because it truly belongs to you. Hallelujah. Lord, when we give you the glory, we do not do you a favor. We do ourselves the best of favors when we give you all the glory. 
we don't do it because we are doing you a favor it's yours it belongs to you and we acknowledge you let the name of the Lord be exalted in the name of Jesus good evening everyone please walk up to three people just greet them and be seated Sorry about the noise in the background. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. Prophesy to your life. Lord, you make all things new, yes, you make making your life all things new, and I will follow you forward. One more time with faith in your spirit. Come on, prophesy. You voices just the voices can we prophesy say you So change the wineskin, oh God, to be consistent with that which you are doing in our lives. And take the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Before I start tonight, I'd like us to, in one minute, pray for the family and the ministry of Dr. Miles Munro and um, the Bahamas Faith Ministry International. Hallelujah. He passed on to glory together with his wife in a plane crash. Praise the Lord. And um, it's very sad because Dr. Miles has been the pivot of the revelation of the kingdom life in my life and destiny. One book that I read, Discovering Your Purpose, Your Potentials. I read that book and I made a vow that I was going to affect my generation. Is one man that I have come to love. He has mentored my life. He has changed my mindset. And um, part of my goals for next year was to have a personal session with him. And so it broke my heart badly when I heard he had gone to be with the Lord. But one thing Dr. Miles said in his lifetime, he said the greatest tragedy on earth is not death. But a life without purpose. I can tell you that he died empty. He released his mindset in books and he set up institutions that will continue his ideologies. I was teaching the School of Ministry students yesterday and um, we're considering a course called Personal Transformation. And we're examining the concept of life and how that it is not so much about the amount of time you spend in your life as it is about the quality of the impact that you make 
first advancing the purposes of the kingdom and then being a blessing to humanity. He consulted for governments. One man who was able to create the balance between the secular realm and the spiritual realm, he stood as a bridge and blessed both realms without compromise. And one of the last messages that he preached before he died was how to die effectively. He taught men how to die. These are men who have cheated death. He encouraged everyone when he went to preach in Kenya. He challenged them to disappoint the grave. Because according to Dr. Miles, the richest place in the earth is not the gold mine in South Africa, nor the oil wells in Nigeria and Iraq, the Middle East, but graveyards where potentials have gone unused. Books that would have changed destinies. Anointings that would have liberated nations. And miles before his death and all through his lifetime it became his conviction. And he said disappoint the grave. Disappoint the grave. And although it was a tragic event but he had already prepared to cheat death long. The Bible says, so then teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Can we rise in one minute and pray for Cairo and Carissa, the two children he left behind, well-trained, well-schooled, and pray for the Bahamas Faith Ministries International. Go ahead and pray in one minute. Comfort them, O oh God. Indeed, the world has felt the exiting of a general, generals in the faith. These are men that Hebrews 11 says the earth is not worthy of. They came with ideologies that conquered the system. They brought Babylon to its knees. They were prosperous from the earthly point of view. They were successful and yet they were relevant. Pivotal to the the dispensational mandate of the spirit for our time they cheated death they reigned in life these are men who even in the grave speak louder than those who are alive bless them lord we thank you for giving the earth the gift of dr miles and ruth and dr richard pinder and all the membership of the bahamas faith ministries international we thank you because they took the banner of leadership and the revelation of the kingdom life to the nations they fought the fight they ran the race they poured their lives like drink offerings we are epistles and testaments and seals of their apostleships lord we thank you lord we pray that you comfort the ministry comfort the membership we pray the entire nation of bahamas in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will bless them. All the sons and the daughters and men and women of God that he left behind, I pray that they will pick up that button and run. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that there will be no discouragement. And Lord, through his life, give us wisdom. That we who are alive will make the most of our life here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate um, all those who made last week's service a great time. Uh, we traveled, but God was faithful. And here the meeting was powerful. The messages were powerful. God bless you. And the Lord increase all of us together in the name of Jesus. God is taking us far. And as always, if we submit to the dealings of the spirit, the Bible says, surely there is an end. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want us to consider a very important subject. It's amazing to see that this is the 11th month of the year. And... Um, a lot has happened in our nation. A lot has happened in our lives. 2014 has truly been um, an amazing year for many. It's been a tragic year. And, um, but in all of these things, we thank God. 
And I want to just share with us something that I consider is very pivotal at this point of our lives. I want to share tonight on the power of hope. Very simple message, but it will bless you. The power of hope. Job chapter 6 verse 11. When we look around our world today and um, we see the complexities of um, of living in today's world ranging from terrorism to um, corruption and all kinds of insecurity, death, poverty and all of these vices that have plagued our nation and our lives and here in Nigeria We've had our toll of the share of pain. Family members have lost loved ones. And a lot has happened in our lives. Many of us have um, had our expectations dashed at one point or the other. And it's important that we understand the concept of hope. And tonight, I know you will be blessed. When the Lord laid this in my heart, I knew that God was going to speak to us and transform our lives. Job chapter 6 verse 11. Now, when you study theologically, the book of Job, um, there's a lot of controversy about the writer of the book of Job and the time, the dispensation with which the book was written. Because uh, contextually, the book of Job seems to predate the law and all of that. We see activities in the book of Job that happened before the law was given. So we know that um, that must have existed in a dispensation that uh, most fitting would be in between the book of Genesis somewhere around there. And theologians generally agree that the book of Job is somewhere there. The writer of the book of Job is unknown because of the character of that book. Uh, it is generally agreed that it would take someone who is either not of human origin or who has sustained an intelligence that is out of this world to have communicated and articulated the book of Job very, very um, accurately. Because the book of Job begins telling us about a man, a wealthy man who feared God and eschewed evil. And then the Bible tells us something strange. It gives us the picture of a meeting that was held in the realms of the heavens where Satan also came. And uh, discussions were made about this man called Job. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, yes, I have considered him and all of that. But does he serve you just for nothing? You have blessed him. Everything he has touched has prospered. And he said, permit me to take all that you have given him and see if he will not curse you to your face. And whilst that is happening, Job was on the earth realm, not knowing that there was a deliberation that was going on. So it's a very interesting book because uh, it's one book that tries to answer the question of why bad things happen to good people. Have you heard that kind of question? <laughs> why do bad things happen to good people? Why do Christians die? Why, why do we have terrorists come into a church or a meeting and bomb it? Why? What is the contemplation? What is the answer? There are so many things that happen in our world that creates a lot of questions. No wonder we have people who were once Christians and then as a result of these unanswered questions, they become atheists or they turn and begin to mock God and do all kinds of things. So Job was that man. In one day, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that Job lost his sons, he lost his daughters, he lost his houses, he was into real estate, he was into agriculture, he lost his business, he lost everything. The only thing that Job had was himself, his health, and his wife. Within a span of a few hours, men kept coming to bring reports. I was standing and there were hailstones and this and that happened. All your children are dead. I'm the only one who is alive to come and testify. And while he was trying to manage the psychology that comes, the shock, another news comes. 
This and that was happening and your cattle and everything. And, and at the end of Job's life, uh, after that news, Job gave glory to God. And that was the end of it. And then, you would think that that would be the end of it. Another meeting was held again. And this time around, Satan comes and God is making boast with Job. And Satan says, well, a man can give anything but his health, his life. Permit me to touch his body and see what happens. And the Lord said, fine. Now, that in itself is a big subject of controversy. Why the Lord would permit the devil to go and buffet a man. Hallelujah. And then all of a sudden, Job began to have soil, uh, uh, boils all over his body. And within a short time, that great celebrity, that great man was reduced to ashes. He sat upon ashes and the Bible says dogs would come and lick his sores. He became a subject of embarrassment. Everybody in the city carried their opinion about him. And then the Bible tells us that three men came, really four. And they came and sat together. When they saw Job's predicament, they were shocked. And for seven days, they could not talk. After seven days, they began to analyze. They stretched their intellect from border to border. Searching what principles of life might have been violated to be responsible for this man's predicament. Are you following me now? And at the end of it, they said, Job, all we can find is that you are a sinner. And Job said, be careful. Don't bring a curse upon yourself. And there was a little boy who sat. Elihu said, I wanted to speak, but I was afraid because I was little. He said, this matter is not just the issue of experience. There is a spirit in man. We need the Holy Ghost to help us to be able to analyze what would have been the situation. And after all of those conversations, Job's wife looked at him and said, Mr. Man, you know I've been there. We had all these children with you. I've been a faithful wife. Your situation is pathetic. I pity you. So here is the solution. My recommendation to this situation is that you curse God and die. And Job said, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? Hallelujah. And then a lot of things transpired. At a point, Job's humanity, this is the part that, that I want you to get. Job, because you see, Job was a human being. And remember, I did a teaching one time on the four living creatures. How that there are four faces of creatures in the throne. The first is the face of a lion. Hallelujah. And it depicts the believer as a king, as royalty, because we are a reflection of God. So that is the dimension of God that we must permit to be at work in our lives. Mighty king, you rule and you reign. And then the face of a calf, and it symbolizes the servanthood of God, expressed in the person of Jesus, which should be a template for our own lives. How that is not enough just to be a boss and a king, but we must also be servants. Hallelujah. And then the third face is the face of a man, which represents our humanity. And that means no matter how mighty we are, times will come in our lives when our humanities will speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that Jesus was hungry. And he went to the farm to go and get something. In fact, at a point he came to see a fig tree. And then he didn't find food. We see the humanity of Jesus. He wept at funerals. Uh, he was grieved when he saw men doing a lot of things, perverting the temple. There was nothing embarrassing about his humanity. And at times in our lives, sometimes we tend to choke ourselves by refusing to allow our humanities to speak. Let me just stop by to say it's okay to cry. There are times that even great men cry. It's not a symbol of weakness. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so Job's humanity, he was trying to hold it. He said, no, nobody should, should accuse God. God is faithful. Though he slay me, I will praise him. God is faithful. Don't accuse him. But as the situation became prolonged, the Bible says hope deferred can make the heart weary. Job began to ask questions. Lord, I have defended you in the midst of my pain. Is this how you are going to allow me? I would have gotten married if I compromised. But Lord, I'm getting to 35. What is happening? 
every time people wanted to speak against you, I defended you. Even when I did not understand why my situation was happening. When my elder brother died, I defended you. A few months later, my younger brother died. I still defended you. And now someone is sick in my family and may die. Where are you? Times can come in our lives. Listen to me. When our humanities will probe God and will demand explanations. The power of hope. Are you getting blessed? So Job was alone and he began to summon God. In fact, he was angry. And he said, Lord, I'm a righteous man, you know, paraphrasing. I have walked blameless before you. What is all this thing? Why is, I demand you. At a point in time, his aggression began to get stronger. And he said, Lord, come down. I, I schedule a meeting with you. If you are faithful and you are just, if your messes are new every morning, except I have been lied to all my life, please show up. I need answers. There are times when people have locked themselves not to pray for power, not to pray for grace, but to say, Lord, can you tell me why this happened? Why was my father sacked? I know that my father has never been part of those manipulating a lot of things. Why do I see ungodly people prospering? Yet for every time I serve you, I seem to pay a price for it. Hallelujah. And Job said this. Mm. He said, what is my strength? This was a communication of a man's frustration. The humanity of Job was speaking. The Bible says he feared God. That means it was not intentional. There are times, brothers and sisters, that life can push you. And you will make some statements sometimes that you will have to go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. You will make statements. Someone sent me a text. I think he lost his mom. And um, he sent me the text two days before that time. He said, please pray. Something is wrong. Pray. I think a guy or a lady. I don't know exactly who. And then one morning I was on my way to travel. And then I got the text. He said, she's dead. He said, I will never trust God again. God is not to be trusted. Now you would easily say, no, don't say that. Sometimes the best way to help people is to keep quiet. If God is not angry at that statement, you should not be. The Bible says he knows that we are dust. Hmm. Hallelujah. And so Job was frustrated. And he spoke. He said, where is my strength that I should hope? And what is my end? that I should prolong my life. In other words, is it not better for me to die? What good is it now I'm alive? I can't do anything. I can't make money again. My reputation has been dashed to the ground. Everything I have lived for, I have spent my entire life for, is gone. And all I have is untold pain. I'm lying in the dust and dogs Dogs who would not even come into my compound have now become my companions and they come to lick my sores. I have become a parable in my own city. And so Job was communicating his frustration. Something happened in chapter 14 of the same Job. Verse 7 and 9, please. Chapter 14, verse 7 and 9. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 14. Oh, hallelujah. I love the Bible. Job 14, verse 7. Okay, let me just stand here. Job 14. You can just stand so that save time. Hallelujah. Okay. I'd like us to read verse 7. Everyone. It was the same Job speaking. Hmm. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something powerful about, about, look at me. Do you know there is a technology that God has put in man? Every time, this is how it works. At first, 
we are always afraid. There are things we are afraid of. Are you getting my point? There is a way you interact with your fears such that you no longer fear again. So what would have made you cry yesterday, you will sit in the midst of it. And after challenging God and yelling at heaven, right at that point, a song of hope will arise. Sometimes the best way for God to bring us to a place of strength and victory is to expose us to our fears so that there is nothing else to fear. Hallelujah. Have you seen a man who has had accident and survived? When you shout and say an arm robber is coming, he will still be moving. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. While everybody is panicking, he just says, man, I've seen too much. If he's dead, I would have died. Are you getting my point? There are men who have cheated the devil with their testimonies. They've gone through too much. When the ministry started, there are certain things that would have to be careful about. But right now, ah, there are things you go through in life you no longer get afraid. Remember when some of you were afraid of carryover? In the name of Jesus, I bind. It will never happen. And you went to the board. You saw it once. You saw it twice. The third time, you just said, Lord, you are faithful. Now you just come and check. What's the CGPA? 2.87. I give you all the glory. And you are comforting somebody who said he dropped from 3.5 to 3.4. And you are saying, may God bless you. Take it easy. He said, can you imagine? God, why did you do this? And you are watching. A time comes when you've gone through too much pain. Your pain suddenly becomes a weapon. It no longer becomes a thing of embarrassment. You look down and it becomes your weapon of victory. And Job in chapter 6 made a statement. He said, I'm dying. What is all this? Heaven was silent. He went through the pain after insulting God. I'm sure he told himself, I'm sorry. Told his wife, I'm sorry. And said, look. And then he said this. Hallelujah. He said, for there is hope for a tree. Who is God speaking to tonight? There is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that's the part I like. It didn't say if it be rooted out. He said if it be cut down because the root is still there. The miracle is not in what you have lost. It's in what you have left. He said there is hope for a tree. God is speaking a powerful message to someone tonight. No matter what you have lost, God is the reason why you did not lose everything. You lost your first class status, but you are still a student. You lost your family members, but you are still alive. They amputated one leg, but you are still breathing. He said there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will what? It will sprout again. Ha! The Bible says rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said for when I fall, when you are about to sit together and make a funeral, you will see me arise again. He said rejoice not over me. They that have laughed at my family, they that have looked at them and said at 31 nobody has gone to school. He said rejoice not, there is hope for a tree. That there are expectations that you have and now is November. The admission list came out and your name was not there. Yet in a dream, you kept seeing that you got the admission. He said there is hope for a tree. The tragedy is that the tree can be cut down, but not rooted out. He said, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Everybody say there is hope. What is hope? Let's define hope very quickly. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. That's what the Lord is doing in someone's life and someone's family tonight. You make 
more time let's sing it as a prophecy for our lives and destinies come on now you make all things new Definition number one. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. First definition. Let's hurry up. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a thing to happen. In other words, is that feeling, that expectancy you have that there's something I expect to happen in my life. And so you keep that fire. You keep that expectation. It's called hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Number two. Hope is a firm assurance. A firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. I'll take it again. Hope is a firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. Powerful definition. The assurance, firm assurance. So in the first definition, we see that hope is expectation. The second definition, faith is firm assurance. The certainty that you know that it will not end like this. Although for now, things may be unclear. Although for now, things may be unknown. But you have an assurance. I don't know how it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. But I know it will happen. The firm assurance. Number three. I'll give you three definitions. Number three, hope is an optimistic attitude. Optimistic attitude of mind. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation. Keep writing. It's an optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes. Based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life. Now there are some key words that I want us to look at. When you talk about hope, the first thing you talk about is expectation. Say expectation. So I expect that certain things will happen. I may not know how they will happen. I may not know when they will happen. I don't even know where they will happen. But I know that they will happen. Number two, firm assurance. That certainty. That I know, that I know, that I know. That although it's been seven years and we've not been able to have a child, we know that we are going to die as parents. I know against all odds, against all medical reports, that I know, that I know, that I know that I may be SS now, but one thing I know is that when I'll be going to be with the Lord, that genotype must change. I may not know which miracle service will bring the miracle, but I have a firm assurance. And then number three is an attitude of optimism. 
I keep my spirit high because I know that things will change. I may not see it. It may not look like it as at now. The job has not come. I've been a graduate for 10 years. No job. I've been a man of God for 20 years and there are just 20 members and I love God sincerely. The ministry is not growing. Finance is not coming. Influence is not increasing. Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. I'm a lady. I've kept myself and I love the Lord. I told God I wanted to marry at 23. I'm 33. It's 10 years of waiting. Nothing has happened. He said, it's an attitude of optimism. Keeping your spirit high. Knowing you are not wasting your time. Very important. Why do we need hope? Very quickly. Why do we need hope? Why do we need to talk about the subject of hope? Why do we really need hope? Is it so important a subject to be talked about? Number one, I wrote here that in a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. In a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. So the first reason why we need hope is because it supplies for us the strength. It gives us the staying power, the impetus to keep going. Even when there is no human reason to keep moving. Hallelujah. Why should I keep serving the Lord? When there are all kinds of things happening. Why should I keep hoping on God? When believers seem to be dying around like chickens in our nation. Why should I keep being optimistic? When it's been years and decades. There's not been any graduate in our family. In a world that is full of uncertainties. Hallelujah. Uncertainties. For instance, the, the, doc, the, the death of Dr. Miles Munro raised a lot of questions around people. You know, because people knew how very confident he was about the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. One of our brothers in the technical department called me this evening to tell me he lost his brother. He just got a report that he lost his brother. Our sister in the media last week, Selena, lost her mom. And the mom was coming from the church. She finished service on her way to go home and a bike carried her. She had an accident, had sustained some internal injuries and um, by the next day, she gave up. And while she died, they were praying. I've seen a lot of people who minutes before people died, they were praying in tongues. In fact, some who died, died speaking in tongues or praying. Uncertainty. There are times when no matter how theologically sound you are, you will be faced with realities that you may not be able to answer people. Why is this happening? Hallelujah. Imagine that that celebrity called Jesus. Imagine a man who conquered death. Will you ever think that he would die? After bringing dead people back to life. You would think even if they wanted to kill him, it was based on that that Peter took a knife to cut Malchus' ear because he said, you don't know who you are trying. And Jesus now gave himself. And he said, Jesus, I don't understand. What is going on here? Somebody tell me I'm dreaming. What is Jesus doing? Wake up. Are you sleeping? You are handing yourself, donating yourself to be killed. And Jesus said exactly that. And Peter said, come on now. So you fooled us all this while. Where is the jazz you've been using? So you are not really mighty. Ah, I knew it. Something in my spirit told me there was more to this man. And he ran away. But he did not know that there is hope for a tree. The Bible likens men to trees. He said, he shall be like a tree. So he said, there is hope for a tree. Jesus died, but he died for only 72 hours. When men were busy discussing his death, he was already alive. Ay, 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 ay. Don't talk about my death when I'm already alive. 
we love talking about death. Two men in Emmaus were discussing the death, whereas the expiry time was only 72 hours. Did you know that this phase of your life that is full of stories is only a comma in the long span of the picture that is characterized by unending victory? It's been five years, but God has given you 80 years to prove to the devil he's alive. Hmm. There is hope for it. A time came, Peter was locked in prison. Now he understood. I'm sure in prison, Peter will be saying, yes, yeah, so this is what happened to Jesus. After doing great and mighty things, terrible things in righteousness, they, they watched the Holy Spirit come upon the church to begin a new dispensation. And now they locked him. James was in the prison. They said, don't worry, we know James. James is a powerful man. And later they just heard James has been beheaded. They said, you mean the knife entered? He died? They said, James is dead. All of a sudden there was panic. They said, my goodness, we thought the anointing was going to speak for James. Uncertainties. And now they caught Peter. I'm sure Peter concluded because the Bible does not record that when they came, they met him praying. He was sleeping. Peter said, well, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Whatever happens, I will go and meet Jesus Christ. But he did not know. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If it is not your time, you remain immortal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? An angel came. And the Bible says the chains just fell by themselves. And he let Peter out. Same thing with Paul. Paul was used to dying. He testified. He would die immediately. They leave his spirit to just enter his body and you get up and find somewhere and rest and the job continues. Strange man. They would take reports that he's dead and they'll hear that he's in another city. Paul. Very strange man. To an extent that some men vowed that they will not eat. Have you read that in your Bible? They say we won't eat until this man dies to our supervision. We must make sure he's dead. I don't know what they did with their lives because Paul lived very long. When he went to that island called Melita, Paul rested there. There was peace and tranquility for some time. In a world full of uncertainty, in a world full of failure, in a world full of darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. It gives us the energy to keep on moving. Still the same point. In life, in ministry, in business, in your marriage, in your academics. In other words, hope is the anchor that keeps us standing fast through the storms of life. Just like the anchor keeps the ship so that the waves will not take you too far. Hope is that anchor. Hope is that anchor that holds your life. When the boys terror storms of uncertainties in life come and buffet you like the house that is built upon the rock, sometimes it may be shaken, but hope will keep you alive. Number two, why do we need hope? Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Without the revelation of hope, there cannot be faith. The Bible says, now faith is, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the what? The confident assurance of the things hoped for. So we must first hope for them. Speaking about Abraham, they say, who against all hope believed in hope. Against all hope, Romans chapter 4. Against all hope believed in hope. So hope is the pillar. One of the pillars upon which faith stands. And very quickly, I'm rushing so that we'll get to where I'm going to dwell for tonight. There are two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. 
two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Number one is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 please. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. The blessed hope. It talks about hope that is beyond this earthly life. That's the first and the ultimate hope. Please listen to me tonight. Hope that is beyond this earthly life. Hope that is beyond the grave. The first dimension of hope that the Bible speaks to us about is what it calls the blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. It said looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So the first hope that must keep us going in life, that must keep us optimistic in life, that must keep us assured in life, is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. That assurance that no matter what happens, even if this body is destroyed, there is a blessed hope. Are you getting what I'm saying? Confident assurance. That the grave is not the end of life. That in spite of all of the poverty and the terrorism and whatever it is, there is an assurance. The Bible calls it the blessed hope. And listen, every other manifestation of hope you have in your life is useless until this is in place. Because this is hope beyond the earthly realm. Let me tell you something. There is life beyond this place. We were talking very passionately with the school of ministry students yesterday and we were really considering the subject of life. We're actually examining the biblical view of success and fulfillment. And I was sharing with them a few things. If your hope does not transcend beyond this earthly realm, listen to me, then of all men, you are most miserable. The Bible says, I saw the grave give up the dead. Now, all this did not happen in the earth. Life was over for them. A time where those who had the blessed hope will rejoice. The sea gave up the dead. The grave gave up the dead. All of the people and he said, I saw the dead stand before God. And he said, great and those who were great and small. I saw standing before God senators. And I saw carpenters. I saw vice chancellors and professors. And I saw villagers. I saw people who could not get food to eat and I saw those who their dogs could eat the food of royalty. He said they all stood before God and the moment of truth came. Books were open. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Books were open and another book was open. He said every man was judged according to the writings of that book and he said whosoever's name ah, I like the Bible. No bribery, no political party, whosoever's name was not found, you will carry your flag, carry your, your, your senatorial district, carry whatever it is to the lake of fire. Carry your prestige and your accolades. Listen to me. When you stand from the realm of the spirit and you look at the earth realm, it looks like a vapor. That's how it looks like. Anyone who has had a, a true visionary encounter and you have been given the privilege to look at earth, you know how you look at the cloud. The earth is truly like a mirage compared to spiritual realities. Therefore, we must have that blessed hope that I know that as I'm going about my business, I know that as I'm doing whatever I'm doing, thank God for breakthrough, thank God for whatever, but I am assured. That if I get out in the morning and for any reason under the sun I do not re return, don't doubt where I am. I've gone to a place of rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
You must convince yourself. Some of you are already afraid. There's no need being afraid of what must happen. Come to terms with it and win the war. Every time you begin, the greatest enemy of mankind, as we know, they ask the wisest man, you know, societally speaking, he's considered to be the wisest man in the earth. They ask him what is the greatest problem of mankind. He said he's shocked that the government have not started talking about it. He said the fact that everybody will die. He said it's a very serious issue. We should forget about the issue of politics and oil and tackle this issue that men will die. You see that he's truly wise, right? He said, look at, we, we get up and we do the things that we do and there is one common denominator. Death. Millionaires have died in this country. Their money could not save them. Is that true? Men of God have died in this country. Habalists have died in this country. Children have died in this country. People have lost babies in the hospital. People have died 100 years plus. It makes no difference. Hear me. There is a blessed hope. There is a blessed hope. Everybody say blessed hope. This is the greatest consolation any man can have. Goodbye world. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I'm staying no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind. To go God's way the rest of my life. A day will come. Let me tell you. Every arrogant man in this earth must come to his knees. Oh yes, absolutely. There are men who live like they are gods of themselves. But my Bible says the earth is the Lord's. He said once have I spoken and twice have we heard. All power does not belong to any political party. It does not belong to any terrorist group. There is a God that sits upon the circles of the earth. He may look powerless now, but a day will come he will show his might like the brightness of the sun. And only those who have this blessed hope. Get five points without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Marry the finest woman in the world, the most handsome and the wealthiest man in the world without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Listen, do charity, have a big ministry, be on air, organize crusades if you wish. If you do not have this blessed hope, in five minutes, when your life evaporates like a vapor, you have wasted your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We consider everything else in our life, but we do not pay attention to this blessed hope. Many of us, it's a shame that for many pastors, this is not even a theme of our messages again. I'm going to talk about other aspects and we're going to pray and speak over ourselves. But first and foremost, I owe a responsibility and I told God, our primary assignment as a ministry, we have four mandates from God. Number one is massive salvation of souls. I rather leave somebody, listen, listen, Look at what Jesus said to somebody who was lying down. He said, your sins be forgiven. And the people said, what are you saying? For many of us, that is inferior to miracles. Hallelujah. But he said, your sins be forgiven. In other words, what you need is a blessed hope. You need something higher than this. The thief on the cross, the other ones... You know, he began to harass Jesus and talk and he was unrepentant even on the cross. And the other one said, uh -uh, shut your mouth. We are getting a recompense for what we have done. We are armed robbers. They caught us. They are, they are hanging us on the cross because we stole. But this man is innocent and Jesus looked at him and said, this day, my goodness, my go all his life of misery became useful by one pronunciation to release him. Can you imagine that? Barabbas stood near the king of kings. The one who could give him blessed hope, yet he did not have it. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the custodian of this blessed hope, yet he did not receive it. He committed suicide and went to hell. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? He went and bought a field with the money and killed himself. The blessed hope. Many times I think about my life and I'm telling you, I live a very happy life. One of the reasons why I don't worry in my life is because I know that every other thing on earth will only happen if I'm alive. Is that true? The subject of CGPA is over when you go to be with the Lord. If the trumpet sounds now, okay, let me not talk about death. Since you're afraid of death, the trumpet will still sound. The Bible talks about his appearing. The trumpet sounds now. I guarantee you I'm out of this place. You just see this mic on the floor. You can come and carry it if you think that what we're saying is joke. Because there are people here who are hearing this and will just laugh. I remember writing a letter to some of my friends and classmates years ago, secondary school classmates, and one of my friends, he studied theater art. He said he saw my rapture entertainment paper, rapture entertainment newsletter. He said he, he saw it, it got to him. I said, don't worry, it will be a newsletter indeed. By the time we check out of this place, brothers and sisters, there is an event called rapture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not a prophetic event. It is a real event. It will happen. Where human beings will exit this earth, the greatest shock of humanity will happen then. So I live my life with eternity in view. Yes, I want to be blessed financially. Yes, I want ministry to expand. Yet, I want this and that to happen. But brothers and sisters, beyond that, that only becomes a worthy pursuit when you know that your eternal security is there. Let me tell you the truth. Satan's ultimate goal is not to make you poor. If that's all his goal, then he has insulted himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan's ultimate goal is not to put curses and spells and witches and wizards. No, that's not Satan's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to make sure that number one, he terminates the possibility of the blessed hope in your life. When he finds out that there is no room, you are already lost, then he will try to deal with you from the earth realm so you can fraternize with him to secure the fact that you will not make it. Hallelujah. Imagine the nightmare Satan lives with, knowing he has been doomed forever. There is no opportunity for salvation. So every morning I wake up, Satan is afraid. Because the more we advance the kingdom, the more his time of doom comes near. He said, have you come to destroy us before our time? There is a time that is their own. It's for them. It has been earmarked. It's not a secret. They know it. That a dispensation will come where death, hell, and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire. The Bible calls it the second death. That is when officially the meter of eternity will start reading. Satan is aware. Satan is aware. That's why the moment you declare the name of the Lord and you commit your life to bringing people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have declared war on the gates of hell. There are people right here Listen, I will never make assumptions. There are people here, you are looking at me. You know right now that if the trumpet sounds, the sincere truth is that you do not have this blessed hope. There is no guessing it, brothers and sisters. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got born again. I think, I just know that I love God. Look at me. Come. Madam, are you married? Yes. When? Uh, Kai. When exactly was I married? I just know that somehow, somehow, this man used to stroll around and now we have many children. Are you married? Answer me, are you married? People celebrate their wedding anniversaries with joy. True or false? We are 20 years in marriage and they smile. They say, for these 20 years, God has been faithful. Let me tell you something. There are many believers deceiving themselves. They do not have one, what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. And number two, they are not taking it seriously. We think about money and every other thing aside from the blessed hope. But tonight, the Lord wants to make all things new.
I'm going to take an altar call. I just feel I should stop here and let's take a powerful altar call right now to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Listen. There is no playing games, brothers and sisters. Whether you are poor or rich. Right now in the church, they say, don't threaten people. Don't teach about anything rapture. Just give them a good reason. <laughs> Whether you feel threatened or not, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Jesus is coming soon. Everything that needs to happen for him to come has happened. The final sign, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom is what we are doing right now. And at every moment, his majesty can come. If you are afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ, it's because you are going to hell. It should be a thing we should rejoice about and say, Lord, finally, an end comes to this life of misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone rise on your feet. We are going to take this altar call right now. Please, let this be a solemn moment. I am, I am, I am dead serious with what is happening right now. Hallelujah. There are people here who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord. I have served the Lord. Some of you may even be preachers. But you are saying sincerely, I am not sure that that blessed hope, there is a condition for it to happen. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not anything that you have to do on your part. You just receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says, for all have sinned. All have sinned. There's nothing embarrassing about realizing that you probably have not received the gift of salvation. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his one and only begotten son. He said, whosoever, no selection, shall believe in him. Believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. There are people here. Some of you, you have been around church. You, you do a lot of spiritual things. And you have believed that that is a justification. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our hope and all our pains will be no more. We will stand and cry, holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. Oh, this is the destiny of the church. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. Our hope and all our fears will be no more. And we will stand with the host of heaven and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you evermore right now as we sing this song wherever you are inside and outside you need to come and surrender to jesus i like you to passionately like a man running away from fire find your way to the front right now Find your way to the front right now. Find your way to the front right now. The moment we raise this song, I'd like you to come. Mean business with him. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. Don't sit back deceiving yourself. We will stand with the hosts of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. We will stand in the golden city, the new Jerusalem. We will and 
Cry, holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. For the last time now. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you. And adore you forevermore. The saints will see him. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. That's what we will sing at his feet. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Oh, when this life is over, that's our song. Holy, holy, holy. They that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Standing. Receiving all kinds of crowns of glory. Standing at His Majesty's. Where He will tell us, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We'll sing holy. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. I know this, that I will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore forever. Listen, even if you live to 120 years. Hear me? You're not going to die young. Don't be afraid. This is not a funeral service. We have a covenant of life and prosperity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, even if you live 200 years, one of the interesting things in the Bible is that they will mention a very long age of a man and then they will say, and he died. He still died. Some of you are standing and you are crying. I tell you the truth. There is nothing to be ashamed of. Tonight can be that night. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what. You... There are some of us who need to rededicate our lives. I just sense that there are still one or two people that need to join them and say, for me, I'm rededicating it. I'm saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been stubborn towards the will and the purposes of God. You are part of that inside and outside. Join them quickly as I pray for you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a light that was changed. Thank you for giving. Lord, I am so. Hallelujah. Those of us in front here, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to the lover of your soul. Talk to him. He died for you. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners. As you pray, I want you to think about your life in one minute and tell yourself it's over. Enough of playing games. And for all of us who are standing, don't think because you are standing, it means you should not reflect. Please, in one minute, I'd like everybody to reflect on your life. Am I living my life in a way that if I see it being replayed, I will be glad I lived that way? Am I living my life in a way that if I am to watch myself in heaven, I will say, thank you, Jesus. I spent my life on the purposes of the kingdom. Lift your voice and pray. This is serious business tonight. This is why Jesus shed his blood. 
please don't you think we are playing games tonight this is a very serious issue if you're under the sound of my voice you should be thinking about your life very deeply and seriously no man will stand for you on that day there is no advocate no pastor no prophet no apostle he said books were open i saw the dead both small and great let what you are hearing tonight not stand against you in the day of judgment pray those of you in front pray jesus you died for me jesus you died for me i return to you now i return to you jesus son of god i believe in you i believe in you that's what you should be saying those of you kneeling down in front jesus son of god i believe in you i believe in you just the voices i like you to hush it from the depths of your heart Said, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting whosoever believes in him hallelujah those of you in front i'd like you to say after me from the depth of your heart i never forget this day some of you are rededicating yourself some of you are truly surrendering all say after me lord jesus i surrender every aspect of my life completely to you I make you Lord of my life I have run away from you for too long but tonight like a prodigal child I return home to you the lover of my soul I return to you wash me with your blood cleanse me make me new give me a new beginning write my name in the lamb's book of life that when this life is over i will have that blessed hope i declare today that i willingly consciously make jesus lord of my life I'm willing to live by your word in the name of Jesus. Father, what a privilege. What a privilege. I ask you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that the grace for a new beginning give them in the name of Jesus. For many of them, they have been running like a deer that pants for the water. And tonight they have found salvation. I ask that this will be a genuine desire. That on that day when we all stand, we will see them. I bless you. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I declare that Jesus is Lord of your life. From tonight, grace to walk in righteousness. I cut you away from any lifestyle that is not consistent with the character of the kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A big congratulations to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers in one minute. They'll just have your details and you return back to your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of us standing, before we continue, there's one more aspect that I must touch and then we'll pray. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you have found me. Keep me keep me go ahead and pray keep me keep me pray lord you have found me keep me oh yes now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless 
now unto him who is able to keep you from falling in the midst of the pressures and the challenges of life keep me keep me from falling he says and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom thine is the power and thine is the glory keep me from falling that I will serve you all my life that I will serve you all my life hallelujah hallelujah God bless you please sit down let's finish up so there are two dimensions of hope the first is the blessed hope and according to Titus chapter 2 verse 13 the blessed hope talks about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we'll be spending eternity with him in a place of absolute rest I wrote a song maybe 10, 13 years ago. The coming of the Lord is near and I can hear the drown of the trumpet so loud when the dead in Christ shall rise again and we who are alive will be caught up in glory to a place of rest called heaven called paradise and there we will rejoice forevermore remember writing that song was my communication i've taken god serious all my life and i want to encourage us Stay with God. Stay with God. A time will come where we will be in a place of absolute rest and peace and love forever. Where there will be no wars, no terrorism, no hunger, no issue of jam and wayek, no issue of corruption and death and sickness. And that is our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Absolutely. The second aspect of hope, we'll deal with that now. When your eternity is secured, you can deal with the quality of your life here on earth. And that's what we want to deal with very quickly. The fact that our ultimate hope is beyond this life. It's not a guarantee that we should allow the devil to buffet our lives here in the earth realm. The Bible says, having the promise of this life, uh, having the promise, uh, how did he put it now? going to get to that scripture first Timothy I, I think we'll get there we'll get there let me just skip it the second dimension of hope is what the Bible calls hope in this life hope in this life so our hope is not just in heaven alone we have hope even in this life hallelujah First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. First Timothy media, if you can help us. Everyone say hope in this life. Yes. If you are supposed to live 90 years old and you are 25 years now or 30 years, how many more years do you have? At least 60 or 65 years. You don't want it to be 65 years of hopelessness and misery. Hallelujah. So we must have hope even in this life. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. He said, but bodily exercise profited little. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable to all things. He said, having the promise and expectation of the life that now is, huh? and then that which is to come. So there is a promise of the quality of life that now is. Jesus speaking to the, to the disciples said, no man who has left father or mother or land houses for my sake and for the kingdoms 
He said, but he will receive in this life. This and that and that and then in the life to come, life everlasting. There are issues in our life today that we are discouraged about and we must sustain the grace to deal with it. Praise the Lord. We need hope in this life to be able to achieve our goals, to be able to push through the walls of limitations, to be able to overcome challenges and obstacles and to triumph over circumstances i'll take it again we need hope in this life so that we can achieve our goals we can push through the walls of limitations we can overcome challenges and obstacles and finally triumph over circumstances these are the two dimensions of hope. One is the blessed hope at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the other is the hope we have that assures us of victory here and now. Praise the Lord. Now very quickly. What is the basis for hope? What is the biblical basis for hope? Let's start with our blessed hope. That means what is the foundation, what is the assurance, what is the condition, what is the basis on which we have our hope. The blessed hope. What gives us assurance that what we call blessed hope is not a lie? What gives us that assurance that we will partake of it? Number one is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. The first basis for our blessed hope, hope beyond this life, is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that has given us access to eternal life and peace with God. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. So the basis for my spending eternity with God, the basis for that hope that I have is the fact that Jesus died the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that today has granted me access to eternal life and peace with God through the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. Hallelujah. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that eternal life comes through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So based on the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, it gives me a basis for having that blessed hope. That truly, on account of what Christ has done, I will be able to stand blameless before the throne. Hallelujah. Number two, what gives us the basis for the blessed hope is the words and the prophecies in the Bible, which we consider to be true. Revelations 21 verse 1 to 5. Let's rush please. Two major reasons why we have assurance that this blessed hope is true. Number one is that Jesus died and he has given us access. Number two is that the concept of this blessed hope has been written in the Bible and we believe it to be true. I saw a new heaven, Revelation 21. This was the revelation that was given to John the Apostle in the Isle of Patmos. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John tells us, based on the prophecy in the book, that there was truly a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw it. Are you seeing that now? John saw it. So he's not telling us what an angel told him. John saw it. So it gives us the basis of assurance. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. We're reading to five. And God shall wipe away their tears. You see where we got the song that we're singing? 
he shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and God himself tells us in verse 5 he said and he that sat on the throne not a delegate he said behold I make all things new and he said write for these words are true and faithful so we can believe it God himself endorsed it that the concept of this blessed hope against all scientific odds is true write it he said document it so that those who will read this prophecy will know that there is truly a blessed hope are you blessed so the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ gives us the basis for our blessed hope hallelujah and then the prophecies of the Bible given and endorsed by God himself further gives us an assurance so that is the the, the basis for our blessed hope what is the basis for our hope in this life then the second dimension what gives us assurance that the cancer will die what gives us assurance that you will build the house what gives us assurance that in spite of all of the delays and the frustration in your life you will emerge a champion what gives you assurance that the ministry that looks small today would be of global impact i call them the attributes of god there are three attributes of god that gives us confidence and gives us hope in this life the first attribute of god that gives us hope in this life is his creative ability the first attribute of god that becomes the basis for our hope in this life is his creative ability his ability to make something out of nothing gives us hope so no matter how hopeless my life is when i look at that attribute of god that it is still within his power to make something with no raw material i know that there is hope for me so when god says he can change my story i can believe in and I'm hold on to that his attribute i preached a message uh, I think it was last year, faith in the faithfulness of God. You can have faith in the attributes of God. I can have faith in the creative ability of God. And the Bible is full of this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, just write it, we may not project it. The Bible says, verse 2, the earth was dark and void and formless. That was a hopeless situation. But then we see the creative power of God. He said, and Elohim said, light be. All of a sudden, he began to recreate the earth out of nothing. If God can recreate the earth out of nothing, it means he can recreate my life no matter what is missing. So that revelation gives me hope to hold on to him. The attribute of God, his creative attributes. In John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, specifically from verse 9 to 12, the entire text of five loaves and two fish. We see the creative ability of God at work. 5,000 men aside women and children, they were hungry. And Andrew saw a young lad having five loaves and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus said, no problem. It's not a hopeless situation when I am there. It is within my power to create. The Bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks. All of a sudden, we saw creation at work again. Hallelujah. Everyone say God has creative power. Because you see, for many of us, it is difficult to see how God will step in and change your situation. Because the raw material you know to produce that change has been lost. Are you getting my point? How can I have hope that I will give birth to a child when the womb that should, should keep the child has been removed? Are you getting my point? Maybe because of fibroid or something, the womb was, it was removed. I saw it. I know it's gone. Can I still have hope? The creator. The creator. Hallelujah. He said, all I need is your cooperation, the creator. The one who can make, nothing is still a raw material for him. 
Everyone say, God has creative ability. So there is hope for my life. I think it was here we had a testimony about someone who jam came out. Remember that jam? And there was 100 and something. Hallelujah. 100 and something. And I think after one of the miracle services or so, the person went back to check the jam, confirmed he had 200 and something. The creator. See, let me tell you, the attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. And the one you believe is the one that can work for you. All of the multifaceted attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. I believe every part of him. I believe everything that he can do. So, the attributes of God, the first is his creative ability. It gives us the basis to have hope in this life. Number two is God's restorative ability. His ability to restore. What does it mean to restore? To bring back to life that which is dead, to make perfect that which is imperfect, and to bring back lost opportunities. God is able to do that. God is able to do that. There is an attribute of God that can restore things. So it gives us hope that even when our situations look hopeless, when God steps in, he can restore. In Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7, just write it. Just write it for time's sake. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7, Ezekiel said that he took me in the spirit of the Lord to a, a valley full of dry bones. Hallelujah. The prophet of God was taken to a valley. The Bible says there were very many and the bones were very dry. Meaning they had been there in a long time. And he says, son of man, can these bones live again? And the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, at the prophet's word, bones began to be joined to bones. I'd like you to say, God can restore. Say it, God can restore. God can bring back to life that which is dead in my life. God can make perfect that which is imperfect in my life. And God can restore lost opportunities in my life. Oh yes. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Arise. Everything that was lost can be restored. I like you to say hallelujah. In John chapter 11, the entire text is from verse 1 to 44. But the part that concerns us is 17 to 27 and 39 to 44. Don't project it because of time. It talks about the story of a man called Lazarus in a place called Bethany. The Bible tells us that Lazarus, one who was greatly beloved of Jesus Christ, Jesus loved him so much. A report got to Jesus and they said, Lazarus whom you love is sick. And Jesus said, don't worry. The sickness is not unto death. Meaning the situation would not be worse than it already is. And when the master speaks, you believe him. But then they returned. And Jesus told them, let's go to our brother Lazarus for he sleepeth. And they said, ah, if he sleepeth, it's good for him. And then he came directly. He said, our brother Lazarus is dead. Four days. And the restorer. He was on his way coming. And when Mary saw him, she was angry. She was grieved. And they said, Master, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. He said, but now I know that it's not late. And Jesus said, Lazarus, your brother will arise. There will be restoration. He said, I know. Lazarus, I know. You have already been speaking about the blessed hope. I know. And Jesus said, do you not know that I... I'm the resurrection. That means it's not an event. It's a personality. It can happen now for you. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he looked at a stone. Men had concluded. And he said, roll away the stone. Let's review that case. For 10 years, your father's promotion has been delayed. But he said, roll away the stone. You take a step of faith. Show me that you have hope by going to roll away the stone. 
I won't roll it for you. Roll it. If you want me to visit that case, roll away the stone. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus stood. And in chapter 35, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. He had so much compassion. And he said, Father, I thank you because you hear me always. And I don't say this because I'm doubting you, paraphrasing, but so that these people will know. And he echoed a voice, the resurrection and the life. He sent a signal that rattled Hades, the place of death, the dead people. And he said, Lazarus, you know why he mentioned Lazarus' name? If he just said, come forth, every dead person would have come to life. And so he mentioned the one he wanted to come. He sent a word and that word came, passed through the astral realm and went and the word like a meter and it saw the spirit of Lazarus and he said, the master calleth. That's how rapture will happen. The blast of the trumpet will rattle through the gates of the spirit and the doors of life will open. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, they saw a man coming out. And he said, take off those grave clothes. Oh, God can restore. Who asks you to close those chapters in your life? Am I speaking to you? Who asks you to close the chapters? There are people who do not even confront certain issues again because they have closed it. But tonight the Lord is saying, open it up. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I gave you a prophetic word, but it is November right now. Can that word still come to pass? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen. I have learned from experience and I've learned in my life that all we need to do, listen, the manifestation of your miracle does not take time. It is the process of preparation that takes time. For about 12 years, Joseph was being trained, but in one night, he slept a prisoner and woke up a prime minister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In one night, Hadassah, Esther, for one year, she kept preparing. Listen, the fact that you are going through a period of pruning, a period of waiting does not mean God is not moving. If you think he's too slow, you want to move faster than him and you will complicate your journey. Wait. In one night, God changed the story of a nation. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, even if he said by this time next year, it will be fair enough. But he said tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Someone is sitting here tonight. By tomorrow night, you will sit down with your hand on your head and you'll be saying, my Lord, I didn't know I was this close. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. That's the testimony of many people now. Listen, you are you have come so close you've been enduring for years but now that you are about to break open the gates of destiny many of us want to turn back i want you to know that the restoration ability of god is still in force are you hearing what i'm saying i almost can't go I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I trust the Lord. Something happened to us, a very interesting story, I won't give you all the details, happened to us at the airport when we were traveling. Some things came up, there were lots of complications and it was going to affect our tickets and all of that. And you know, we were a bit concerned because I think there was issue of overbooking and so on and so forth. And we had to make sure that we arrived on time and all of that. And humanly speaking, humanly speaking, at a point, in fact, about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to the time that we eventually secured the tickets, there was, all hope was lost. They told us there's no room again. This and that and that has happened, so they, they were, there had to be changes. And there was no human way. I called the guys and I said, guys, 
this is the situation we're in now. If things get bad, this and that and that, this is worse. Let's just prepare for the worst, but God is faithful. Let me tell you something. It did not take more than 10 minutes before they wrote all of the tickets. Is that true? We're the last to get into the flight. Hallelujah. They were standing. I'm not sure they were even aware. You see that? And they just, the tick, everything was in less than 10 minutes. God, when God is ready to stand up on your case, see, when you see God keep quiet, Papa Deboye preached a message, when God is silent, when God is silent, that's when you should start talking, praise him, give him room, give him space through your, your praise, and say, Lord, I don't know what you are doing, but I know you are doing something. Take the time to prepare the table, because it's going to be a large table. There are people who should come. Take the time. When God arises, he will scatter it. Let me tell you something. When it is your season of breakthrough, I don't care whether they say curses or yokes or X, Y, Z. God will stamp everything and open the door and say, let me see the man who will stop him. For someone, if you will just wait a little longer, this is the word of the Lord. The miracle will happen before you celebrate Christmas. Just wait a little longer. The mighty God is still alive. He told you and he's still faithful. Oh, we judge him faithful. It will still happen. It will still happen. Who is God speaking to? It will still happen. It will still happen. One of our brothers here, both him and, the, and his wife, the, the ladies in Osh, Oshas and all of that. I remember when that brother met me. They are married now. They married early this year. I think around April. I remember when that brother met me. And the brother was, you know, he was sharing with me a bit about his marriage life and all of that. And I told him, I said, God will bless you and God will do a quick work. Brothers and sisters, within a short time, I was shocked. And if you see the pretty and godly lady, a combination of everything, within and without. Come on, ushers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whereas someone has been searching without the help of God for decades. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Let's sing it one more time. I searched all over. Come on. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. His ability to restore. God can restore the job of your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can restore it. He can restore it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. God can restore every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, I will restore to you the years the canker worm has stolen. The palmer worm and the caterpillar, I will restore. It is within my power to restore. The second attribute of God. In 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's project it very quickly. 2 Kings chapter 6. I want us to hurry up because we'll pray. Wow. We must rush. From now, take up wings. We are going to rush. Hallelujah. 6 verse 1. And the sons of the prophets came to Elisha. Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Verse 2. Let us go, we pray thee unto Jordan. And take thence every man a beam. And let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, he said, go ye. In other words, let's increase space. Verse 3. And... And one said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And so Elisha goes with them. Verse 4. So they went with them. 
He said, and as they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood to make the place for their meeting. Five. But as one was felling the beam, what happened? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, it was borrowed. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I need help. I collected this to do the work of God, but it has landed me in trouble. Mm. Verse 6. And the man of God said, Calm down. He said, Where did it fall? There is a God that can restore. Who is God speaking to? And he showed him the place and he used an insignificant thing, sorry. A stick that has no relevance. And he threw it upon and the Bible says the iron from under started swimming until it came to the top. Verse 7. Therefore he said, take it up to you. And he took his hand. I prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names. In a way and a manner you never expected to happen. My God will show up for you before the end of this month. In the name that is above all names. I'm speaking to you. There are things that you have lost and only God can give you. I stand in under my office and in the name that is above all names. I prophesy to you. No matter where that axe is. It is still in the river. It didn't disappear. It only left you. In the name that is above all names. We command that axe head to float. Please sit down. Listen. Look at me. The fact that you don't see a thing does not mean it has stopped existing. It is there, but it is not within your reach. It is within the power of the master to call it from wherever it is. I hope you understand. How many of us can state... Um, I think that's the first law of thermodynamics, right? What does it say? Huh? Energy can neither be what? Nor destroyed. Is that true? That means the concept of disappearance is a mirage. It only leaves your sight, but it's somewhere there. Hmm. The bones were scattered, but when the master spoke, they found themselves. You would have thought it's over. Hear me? Let me tell you something. Armed robbers came to your house and they stole. You do not see what they've carried. But there are many kinds of it in the earth. And when the master steps up as a restorer, you will see things in dramatic ways come into your life. And when God restores, he does not give you what you lost. He gives you what you lost and what you would have gained if you still had it. That's what restoration is. If God just gives you what you lost, it's called progress, not restoration. Until God gives you plus the balance on top. He said, who has believed our report? The third attribute of God, very quickly, that gives us the basis for hope in this life is God's ability to bring acceleration. God's ability, his attribute as a God that can suspend time. He can move beyond time. Move beyond protocols. He can expedite the process of certain things. His ability to bring acceleration. In 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 41 to 46, 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 41 to 46. The Bible speaks to us about the prophet. Hallelujah. A great prophet of God. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Next verse. We we'll read down to 46. And Ahab went to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Camel. Watch this. Ahab ate and drink, and he started running. He had started going, but Elijah seemed to be delayed. He was here sitting. Let's watch what happens. And he cast himself down upon the earth and prayed 43. And all of that, he told his servant, go and check until seven times 44. All the time, while those seven times were happening, Ahab was already running. 
he was already moving ahead the bible says it came to pass that behold there arises a little cloud like a man's hand and he said go up and say to Ahab okay right here sorry I, I got it wrong this is the point where he told Ahab prepare your chariot get it down uh, that the rain stopped in us so now he started running verse 45 Ah, Kabola Kataya. the Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel so we see that Ahab had gone very far but the man of God was there no help 46 and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he guarded up his loins and ran on barefoot come on say speed a man on barefoot started running he said he ran before Ahab and he caught up with him down to Jezreel so it gives us hope that no matter what the delay is God can God can give speed to your feet and you will run and in one month you will do what has taken men 10 years 10 years brothers and sisters believe me it is possible when God quickens he said he will make your feet like the hinds feet his ability to bring acceleration the Bible tells us how that when Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side they entered the boat and they started going ahead of him is that true and the Bible says he stayed to pray they were six hours ahead of Jesus six hours ahead but when he got up he started walking and within a short time he caught up with them and he was about to overtake them they thought he was a ghost and he walked on water it doesn't have to be the normal process when God steps in he can break protocols are you hearing what I'm saying in John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 but our verse of emphasis is from verse 6 to 10 project verse 6 to 10 for us John chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10 the Bible tells us about a wedding in Cana and the Bible tells us they took out time to prepare that wedding it probably took them days to make wine but that wine finished they needed a miracle and something happened it says and there were there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three this and that and then verse 7 and Jesus said fill the water pots it does not have to undergo the process of fermentation there is a spiritual fermentation process that can happen come on now ah yes you don't need to wait until it produces all of those things are you getting what I'm saying no enzymes no nothing no ethanol no nothing no no hydrocarbon no nothing a technology in the spirit fill the water pots with water and they fill them up to the brim verse 8 and he said draw it out and take it to the governor chemical reaction finished yield hundred percent are you getting my point hundred percent no waste nothing to throw away no releasing of any co2 or anything no chemical process finished expedited time at once and he said draw it out and take it verse 9 and when the ruler of the feast tasted the wine so on the way it became wine at once and he knew not whence it was he said the governor of the feast called the bridegroom verse 10 and he said every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse comes in other words people give their best at the first time but he said why have you kept the good wine until now there is someone here within a short time what you will do men will think you took 10 years to do it but that it happened within days one of our brothers Mukhtar I think he did his whole, his whole project within a short time because they later cancelled the whole thing and what he did within two days was greater than what he did in months everybody shout speed shout it again oh god will accelerate your life hallelujah finally before we pray how do we activate hope it must be activated it doesn't just happen three keys and we'll rise up to pray activating hope principle number one 
total surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you want to activate hope in your life both blessed hope and hope in this life it starts with surrendering to jesus christ total surrender gives you an eternal consolation that in the end of all things you will be with jesus forever i call it the master hope the master hope when you surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you have ultimately activated hope scriptural references romans 5 verse 2 don't project romans 5 verse 2 and then first john 5 verse 13 talks about us knowing that we have eternal life so total surrender to the lordship of jesus number two how do we activate hope the power of testimonies the power of testimonies the power of testimonies psalm 66 verse 16 the power of testimonies psalm 66 verse 16 declaring your testimony activates an assurance in the listeners the bible is full of testimonies that many have held on to and seen it reproduced in their lives testimonies can reproduce themselves in the lives of the listeners so every time i testify of what god has done in my life it activates hope so someone who is about giving up just hears that god did this and he says, if god did it then i will still hold on hallelujah psalm 66 verse 16 says come and hear all ye that fear the lord and i will declare what he had done for my soul i will declare it i will declare it in luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 39 just give us verse 39 luke chapter 8 from verse 39 but the whole context is 26 to 39 the bible speaks to us about the madman in gadara hallelujah the madman in gadara after he was healed he was blessed he wanted to go with jesus and jesus said no go and the bible says return to your house jesus was telling him go and testify return to your house and show how great things god has done unto thee and the bible says and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things jesus had done unto him so he published testimonies are very powerful let me give you two more scriptures psalm 22 verse 22 and psalms 40 verse 9 psalms 22 verse 22 and psalms 40 verse 9 all these scriptures point to the fact that it is important for us to testify in fact the bible says it this way it says and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony your testimony is very important there are many people here god has done too many things for you but nobody knows nobody knows about it hallelujah when they say submit your your names and come and tell us what god has done there are many of us here that have striking testimonies many of us come for counseling and god does remarkable things and we keep quiet i tell you we don't share one over 20 of the remarkable testimonies that happen in this house and through this ministry in fact there are more people who share testimonies outside of koinonia than those who share testimonies here when you share your testimony you you activate hope in the life of people hallelujah praise the lord i'll never forget steve strings i remember one time um he gave a testimony it was a miracle how he got admission in abu he got admission in the third list the first list came out his name was not there the second list came out and his name was not there but he had the testimony of someone who were in living faith that Sunday and the testimony of somebody and the person testified that he went around Senate seven times angry and saying Lord this is Jericho it must fall and when admission list came out his name was there Steve Strings said that's it Steve Strings went around seven times that list came out his name was there because of testimonies listen many of you 
have taken the same steps some people took and you got the result but you have kept quiet hallelujah one of our school of ministry people he he came in i think he should be around here and he came he, he sent me a text a very humbling testimony in fact i told him to come over at the school of ministry tomorrow just to share with, with our current students to bless them what god has remarkably done in his life within a short time god has done too many things for us and if you will not give him the glory you will stop seeing his hand in your life he said if you will not glorify me i will raise up stones meaning i will only raise up what will glorify me hallelujah so the power of testimonies number three and this is where we wrap up tonight the ministry of prophets of God. How do you activate hope? The ministry of true prophets of God. Not just prophets in office, but men and women of God who stand in prophetic dimensions. Listen to me. This is, this is very important. I want you to listen because we're about to pray. All through scripture, true prophets of God have been dispensers of hope and agents of change. Men have always been God's weapons that he will use to bring hope alive and to create changes in people. Hallelujah. Joseph was the prophet of God that was sent to Egypt to preserve them. Elijah was sent to a widow in Zarephath to preserve her and restore to her what the famine had taken. Elijah was also sent, um, Elisha, was sent to the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet. They were about to take her children and do trade by battle with them. And the woman ran to the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Do this and that and that. And the woman came out of the situation. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, the story of Naaman. The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the, of the Syrian army. He was a great man, but he was leprous. Hallelujah. And when they sent him with a letter, the prophet gave an instruction. Go and wash yourself seven times in Jordan. And that was it. The scripture we just shared in 2 Kings chapter 6. The restoration of the axe head by the instruction of a prophet of God. Listen to me. When a people lack a prophetic voice when a people or a ministry or a, terror, a, a, a territory lack true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom will become their experience I'm saying this please get it I will repeat myself when a people when a ministry when a territory lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom becomes their experience again and again and again i'm trying to look for a scripture that just came to my spirit ezekiel 22 verse 30 let's look at something that the prophet said ezekiel 22 verse 30 we're rounding up right now while they project that, I'd like you to write Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7. We've read the scripture, the valley of dry bones. It happened to the prophet of God. The prophet of God gave an instruction. Every time you are in need of hope, you are in need of change, among other principles you engage in is find a true prophet of God. He said, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none so I destroyed the land because there was no man the Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore there must be a voice let me tell you something in every territory and every every society there are prophetic agents that God plans strategically they represent dispensers of hope. 
Men who God stamps their voice, stamp their words. Hallelujah. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, the last verse. Hosea chapter 12, the prophet told us something that has become an instruction in the body of Christ. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. He said, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. By what? A prophet. Now hold on. It is true that God delivered the people. But their hopes were shattered until a man showed up. They never, it is true that there was prophecy. That there will be deliverance for them. But nothing happened until a man, Moses, showed up. The moment that prophet of God appeared, hope was brought back to life. When they saw him, he gathered them and said, people, begin to prepare. You are days away from this captivity and you'll be out. And he went and challenged that, 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 that God called Pharaoh. Bishop Oyedeko said, prophets are territorial commanders. It's an exact word. Now, it may sound arrogant, but it is not. It's an election of grace. When God calls a man and truly puts a true apostolic and prophetic mantle, God makes it a point of duty to back you. When you speak in the name of the Lord, he said, I prophesied, but I did it as I was commanded. And he said, hear ye the word of the Lord, spoken to an envoy. He said, believe the Lord. And by a prophet, sorry, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he still preserved them. The ministry of true apostles and prophets of God in the earth has not ended. Contrary to the popular theology that people speak, it has not ended. There are still men and women, but you doubt their ministry to your detriment. The Bible says, believe the Lord. And you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Doubt the Lord and refuse to be established. Doubt his prophets and suffer for the rest of your life. It's not idol worship. I know there is an imbalance where men have made themselves gods. But I can tell you, it is part of the program of God to use men to speak in the purposes and the counsel of God. When the prophet Simeon held on to Jesus Christ, he began to prophesy to him. There was a prophetess, 84 years she had been in the temple, waiting for the consolation of Israel. She carried Jesus Christ and spoke, and she was ready to die. And Jesus walked, and nothing could kill him until he gave his life. By a prophet, he came. Isaiah prophesied, unto us a child is born. By a prophet, he came. By a prophet, he was preserved. If Jesus Christ needed to subscribe to the true ministry of the prophetic then you cannot do without it hallelujah we are going to pray we will pray these three prayer points and I will be prophesying from the depth of my heart let hope arise rise up on your feet let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light just sing it once or twice and then I speak about our lives. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your home. I like you to see the hopeless situation before you and sing this song to his face. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your home. Oh, it will change. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. For the last time now, let hope rise. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your Hallelujah. Three prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord, you are a creator. I need a creative miracle 
in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Shakata pakata lekete. Sakata prekete baba baba baba. Can I have some prayer people behind the mic, please? We have five minutes to pray. Lord, I need a creative miracle. Oh, I need a Hallelujah. Listen. Prayer point number two. Mention every area where the devil has taken anything and say, Lord, tonight, let there be a restoration. Let there be a restoration. Lift your voice and pray. Restoration. In finances. Restoration. In family. Pray on your from January to now. Pa Lift your voice and pray. Pa Give me speed. Pa Give me speed. Pa if you pray from your heart, God will answer. If you pray from your heart, God will surprise you. If you pray from your heart, supernatural accomplishment by an anointing and the heart of the Lord for body hijack and the hand of the Lord came upon it like that. And the hand of the Lord came upon it like that. And the hand of the Lord came upon it like that. And the hand of the Lord came upon it like that. And the hand Lord, in one month, you will do in my life and do my life what has not been done in ten months. Lord, in one month, in one month, I believe you. Oh, I believe you. In one month, oh, in one month, you will do in my life. In one month, you will do in my health. In one month, you will do in my finances. 
what has not been done in ten months. Hallelujah. 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 We are still going to pray that prayer point. I'd like you to mention three things that you want to see done before miracle service this month. If you believe, listen, if you don't have faith, it's okay. You can stand aside. Just be praying in tongues as we pray. But if I am releasing my faith with you, that three things you are telling God, Lord, I hold on to hope that between now and miracle service week, do it for me. If you believe God, oh, lift your voice and pray. Oh, I believe you. Oh, I believe you. Lord, we believe you. We are believers in this house. 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 You have done it before. You will do it again. You have done it before. You will do it again. We agree as a house that before miracle service, three things, mighty things, mighty visitations, you will do in our life. Three things, mighty things. We believe you. We believe you. Pray. God will do it. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God will do it. My God will do it. Lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. I told you the third key is the true apostolic and prophetic ministry. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what your expectations are. But I know that for God to have brought this message, there are people who need a miracle desperately. And it will take a prophetic word. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name that is above all names, if you take me as a servant of God, in the name that is above all names, I speak over the situation that has challenged your life. If I be a man of God, between now and the end of this month, it must answer to the name of Jesus. Amen. It must answer to the name of Jesus. Amen. It must answer to the name of Jesus. It must answer to the name of Jesus. I come tonight in the name of the Lord, the captain of our salvation. I come in the name of the one who is the multi breasted one who said, Is there anything too hard? And I invoke the powers of the heavens. I decree and declare in the name that is above all names. Lord, I prophesy, let miracles erupt in the lives of your people. Let miracles erupt in the lives of your people. Receive financial miracles. In one month, someone here will get a financial harvest that January to October has not given you. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus. In one month, someone will give you a gift before miracle service that no man has given you in your entire life. For someone here, you will hear a testimony from home that you have never had all your life. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have been trusting God for specific things. And as it is humanly speaking, it doesn't look like you have what it takes to get it. But in the name of Jesus, may the hand of the Lord come upon you tonight. Amen. And I prophesy speed. Amen. I prophesy speed. Amen. I prophesy speed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. 
and every power and every force that frustrates the rising of hope in your life in the name of Jesus I come under the anointing of the spirit I challenge those powers and I command them to let you go now the Bible says by a prophet they were preserved I command that you are preserved Amen. your going out and coming in is blessed we will not hear any report of death death we speak to you anywhere you see one of these ones we command you to stay clear in the name of the Lord Jesus and every fear of death every fear of failure that is in you that makes you think you will not see the end of the year the Bible says by a prophet they were preserved I command that you are preserved in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the God that brought you to 2014 will take you into 2015 thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day nor the noisome pestilence or all these that wasted in noonday I command that you are preserved the seal of the blood is upon you every altar that invokes your name will invoke fire upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus every coven every altar that invokes your name or that of your family members what will show up is the fire of the Holy Ghost be blessed in the name of Jesus everything these hands that are lifted said to do I pray in the name of Jesus may they prosper those of you who are walking I prophesy that these two months will be the best time you have had walking this year in the name of the Lord Jesus thank you Jesus those who are trusting God students for where the school fees of next session will come from before miracle service you have your school fees in your account in the name of the Lord Jesus we provoke the ministry of destiny help us before miracle service you return with your testimonies hallelujah Lord Jesus we give you praise this is your first time worshiping with us here this is koinonia and we love you wherever you are please make your way to the front right now we want to pray for you very quickly thank you for coming thank you for coming celebrate them koinonia God bless you God bless you no matter how far inside and outside God bless you you are most welcome you're most welcome let's keep standing we're rounding up let's keep standing please let's keep standing God bless you keep coming make your way to the front we have a blessing and a prophecy for you hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much for coming God bless you for coming this is koinonia hallelujah your life will never be the same I guarantee you I need you Lord I need you from my heart I need you Truly I need you This is my cry to me I need you Lord I need you I need you I want you I love you an opportunity for us to express how much we need you Lord tonight the brief moments that we have together give us a deeper passion for you 
cause us to love you more than life itself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please be seated. He is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able more than able Hallelujah. to handle everything that comes my way. If you believe this song, join me and sing. He is able more than able to do much more than I could ever dream. Lord, you are able. You are more than able. You're able. Tonight I want us to pray. Just encourage and we'll pray. Some people, can you help me? Hallelujah. Haggai. Book of Haggai. This is the end. This is the end. For me, this is not a special. Your holy presence that is living in me. This is my daily bread. You are my daily bread. You are my. Voice and words. 
worship before the presence of God something is happening to you hallelujah it is possible to be in the presence of God and not know and not be changed but when you come before his presence and your heart is opened you will be changed Haggai 2 verse 9 Habakoshatabalalaba the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former saith the Lord of hosts and in this place I will give peace saith the Lord jump to verse 20 jump to verse 20 And again the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Look up. How many of you know that there are shakings happening around the world right now? He said, I will shake the heavens. I will shake the earth. In a way and a manner that no man can pretend not to know what is happening. Next verse. Verse 22. And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. So this is coming to pass. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. And I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the hidden. Is this in your Bible? This is God saying this is what I'm doing in this season. He said, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down. Everyone by the sword of his brother. 23. I want you to read this together. I want to read. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, put your name there, my servant, Put your father's name there. Say the Lord. And will make thee a signet. He said, and when all these shakings are happening, this is what I will be doing with you. He said, he called him by name and called the name of his father so that you will not be mistaken. He said, I, you know what a signet is? A signet is the king's symbol of authority. When a king makes laws, he uses his signet ring and stamps it. He said, when all these are happening, this is the prophecy for you. Because you are my servant, he said, I will make you a symbol of royalty. Because I have chosen you. If you believe that, say amen. Yeah. He began to speak to Zerubbabel about the glory of the latter house first and foremost he told him he said do you remember those of you who are old enough do you remember this house talking about the nation of israel the temple he said compared to what you see today it's nothing to write home about 
He said, but don't be discouraged for I am still moving. There is something about to do. Where is the power, the ability, the light, the authority? We talk so much about the days of God's generals. We talk so much about mighty men. We talk so much about mighty works. Terrible things in righteousness. The Bible talks about certain kinds of people that were almost not like human beings. In the book of Hebrews 11. It says, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Where are these kinds of people? What dimension of glory did they walk in that, bring, that brought them into this depth of kingdom reality? But right now what we see happening in the church and in our television is, is, not a, is nothing to be compared with the things that have been done in the earth. But the Lord is saying, do not be discouraged. In case many of you have been wary and are saying, Lord... You have told us that you will do mighty things in our days. And he left Zerubbabel with a prophecy in verse 9. He said, for the glory of this house you are seeing is about to surpass the glory that you have even seen before. He said, and I will fill this house with my glory. Hallelujah. And I hope you realize that in the New Testament, the temple is not just a building like this. The Bible says, Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so God is saying in this season, He wants to fill your life with His glory. He wants you to be so full of His glory. So full of His power. So full of His grace. That He will use you as a symbol. His signet ring upon the earth. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that this is what God is doing in this season? God is searching for men. Every time there is catastrophe and disaster. In our first service in January, I told us that I saw a lot of commotion happening in the earth. Death, murder, all kinds of things. But in the midst of it, the Lord told us this is a season of supernatural exploits. It is the character of the spirit to see the end from the beginning. And he speaks as though he's already in the end. Because you see, God does not have a process in his life. The beginning and the end are all present before him. So he speaks from his realm of reality. Hallelujah. And he said in this season, Zerubbabel prophesied that I will shake the heavens and the earth. And that the glory of the latter house will far exceed the glory of the former. The glory of all the people in your family, the thing you are about to do. He said, I will walk a walk in your days that even if they told any man, he will not believe. I will walk a walk. You have seen what your father have done. You have seen what your mother, you've seen what the people around. But God is saying, I will walk a walk in your life. That if I told you, you will not even believe. Oh, this I believe. I'm a believer. I believe God. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. The performance is only for them that believe. Hallelujah. I will fill you with glory. This is the year and the season that God wants to bring us into his glory. That you will be so full of the glory, the presence of God. Hallelujah. But how will this happen? John 12. God is going to stir up and activate something in your spirit tonight. Hallelujah. I'm just giving us a charge and we'll pray. I want us to do some prayer in this place tonight. As we prepare ourselves for the miracle service. Verse 23. Now, every time Jesus is talking, listen. Because the Bible says, every word that proceeds from his mouth is sufficient to keep you alive. Hallelujah. Anytime you are studying scripture and Jesus is talking, pay attention. This is what Jesus is saying. And Jesus answered them and said, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be what? Glorified. Next verse. 
So he said, this is the hour that the Son of Man will be glorified. But how shall it happen? He said, verily, verily. In other words, I stake my reputation at this. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. The Bible says, it abided alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. I want to share with you tonight very briefly the mystery of death and glory. I want to show you that in the journey of the believer, there is a relationship between death and glory. This is a message that has not been understood by the body of Christ. We want power. We want anointing. What makes certain people so anointed, so full of power, so full of authority, so full of grace? So full of the favor of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus began to speak and said, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. The very next verse, he tells us how he's about to be glorified. He said, except a corn of wheat falls. That means there is a relationship between death and glory. Listen to me, saints of God. If you want to become a great man, a man, a mighty man in the spirit, this message is for you tonight. This is a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. And Jesus begins to relate death and glory. Haggai prophesies that is the intention of God in this season to bring us into greater glory. And Jesus is saying, in fact, it's not just the season. The hour has come. And he's teaching us the principle. That until the activity of death finds expression in you, you cannot manifest and walk in the glory of God. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I'm teaching you the art of the secret place. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reference you, Lord. I will reference you, Lord. Papo Kashata Balaba. I will reference you, Lord. For in your presence. There is life everlasting. I will reference you, Lord. I will reference you, Lord. I will, you, Lord. When God is set to bring his glory in your life. The first thing that happens to you is you begin to die. Now this, listen, when you begin to die in the spirit, that's the time to rejoice. Hallelujah. Because when a corn of wheat dies, out of that decay will spring forth a new seed. And it will begin to bear fruit. Paul says, so then, death works in us, that life will work in you. The degree to which you are dead, is the degree to which you can minister. Only dead men can carry the glory of God. When the glory of God comes, the first thing it does is kill you, and then it makes you alive again. That's why Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. He said, nevertheless, I suddenly found myself alive again. But this time around, I do not live by my flesh. I live by another life. Another law. Another set of values. Hallelujah. When God is set to bring his glory to your life, 
Listen. The first thing that will happen is that you will die to your old mindset. Hold on. The Bible says the glory of the latter house. In other words, the latter house is not the same as the former house. Correct? When God, the Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Many of us want to just tidy up the old wine skin. God wants to tear it completely and replace another one. He said you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Old mindsets, old ideologies, old principles. The word of God gives you a new mindset. Not the mindset of your village. Not the mindset of your culture. See, when when the word of God begins to walk in you, you begin to die to your old ideologies. Suddenly you find out that the things that attract and interest you are changing. This is the sign that you are prepared for the glory. Your appetite, the things that compel your desire, begin to change. Death is walking in you. Hallelujah. Your mindset begins to change. Your plane of perception of both spiritual and natural things begin to change. You see things from another perspective. Death is working in you. Then you begin to die to the flesh. You find out that your flesh has no hold on you again. Listen to me. A lot of believers do not have the grace and the control over their flesh. Paul said in Romans 7, he said, but with my spirit I serve the Lord. And then in my members, my body, I see another law walking in me. So that the things I would want to do, I do not find myself doing them. And the things I do not want to do, that's what I find myself doing. He said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Although a great apostle, he was communicating his frustration. Hallelujah. The flesh. When you begin to die to your flesh, the things of the spirit no longer become a burden. Are you listening to me? Things like prayer. Things like fasting. Things like your commitment in the house of God. It no longer becomes a thing of force. You now have a revelation. The grip of your flesh is no longer there. Hallelujah. The word of God does not become a burden for you again. You will begin to flow naturally with the Holy Spirit. Then you will die to the world, cosmos, the system. You will die to the mindset of this system. The Bible says, love not the world. It says, he that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The word there is eros. The word is lost. Hallelujah. A craving, an uncontrollable, unquenchable, godless appetite for the world. The more you begin to die to the world, you will find out that the things of the Spirit become your passion. This is not about pastor. Are you listening to me? This has nothing to do with ministry. Because there are some of you looking at me right now. You are so indifferent about the things of God. Let me announce to you that you are still alive in your flesh. Forget about the issue of glory. Glory is not a thing of prophecy. Are you listening to me? I can't prophesy glory into your life. Glory is a realm you attain unto. It's not receive glory. No. There's nobody that has prophesied glory to anybody from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of glory. He's the one who brings you into that realm of glory. Where you become supernatural. You become unusual. You become powerful. Full of light. Full of grace. And you can chart the course of your destiny based on the integrity of the word of God this is what God is doing in your life hallelujah but the hardest thing for believers listen to me is to die many believers don't like that subject of death 
because death connotes inconvenience you will die to your ego you will die to your plans you will die to your ambitions you will die to everything your whole world what you have what you have built the tower of babel that you have built when god comes into your life he will not just put a crown on it he will shatter that tower of babel and begin to rebuild a new city after his own pattern this is what is not taught in church we teach people that you come as you are just have whatever you have. just add whatever god brings to you that's not true god empties you completely you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin many of us are still carrying our old wine skin your old mindset your old value systems you don't want to leave them you are holding on to them you are afraid of the unknown you are afraid of launching into god you are afraid of your friends you are afraid of loneliness you are afraid of your associations you are afraid of the embarrassment and the stigma and the temporary um, inconveniences that come as we contend to walk in the spirit romans 8 verse 18 says for i reckon that the sufferings the constraints the setbacks of this present time is not worthy hallelujah when you see a woman pregnant look up everybody when you see a woman pregnant there is another life there is a baby in her womb are you listening to me it will destabilize her posture temporarily is that correct it's not whether she likes it or not she will find herself bending by force so long as she wants to keep that baby she will do unusual things you may not like it her appetite will change because of the child she's carrying are you listening to me she wake up by two o'clock and say she wants to drink um, uh, milk and then you bring it she said no he was jollof rice she said now this is this is a product of something that is happening are you listening to me her ideologies change she begins to visit the hospital consistently when you see these things it begins to point an arrow to you that very soon this woman is going to deliver a child hallelujah so when the holy ghost is birthing glory in you there will be a season of travail the bible says as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son listen to me church of the lord jesus christ i will not deceive you the birth of anything valuable is painful are you listening to me the birth of anything valuable is painful anything at all The Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs. When you realize that you are part of the army of God, the glory house that Zerubbabel saw and prophesied, you realize that it's a season of glory. Now is the time to constrain yourself. As you abide by the principles of God, it will cost you. It will cost you your reputation. It will cost you your friends. Hear me. You cannot want this side and want that side. Uh -uh. The Bible says no man can serve two masters at a time. You cannot serve your friends and serve God. You cannot serve your ego and serve God. You cannot feed your desires and feed God. Ladies, listen to me very carefully. Because you are the ones that are most vulnerable at this time. You love God until you find the things that your desires crave for. I need you. I need you. Nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you. I need you. For you satisfy the longing inside. Some of you should not be singing this song because you are lying. You are just singing it because you are enjoying it. But you are telling lies. You are telling lies. 
While you are saying, Lord, I need you, God is saying, it's a lie. The angels are saying it's a lie. See, listen, you must get to a point in your life where you make up your mind and vow. It's an oath of allegiance. It's an oath of fraternity with God. You say, Lord, I'm on your side once and for all. There is no doubt again, I'm on your side. If it means me not getting married to be on your side, so be it. If it means me not being rich in this life, so be it. If it means me not having any reputation, not having any church, not having any ministry, so be it. You cannot love your desires and love the glory of God. No way, sir. But can I tell you something? If you pay the price for that glory, the Bible says, the glory of the latter house, what God will do in your life when he is done with you, will far exceed what you would have desired for yourself. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I... You know, listen, Christians have this ugly way of thinking that God is the one who will wreck their lives. Look at me. If you have that mindset, repent this night. As we start praying, before joining our, our prayer point, just find somewhere and lie down and say, Lord, I thought you would destroy me. Hallelujah. A lot of people believe that when you come to God, He will just make you a failure. He will make you a useless person. It's preachers that taught that, not the word of God. Hallelujah. For my Bible tells me, I know the thoughts I think towards you, said the Lord. That means God is thinking about you. God is thinking. You don't need to wonder what is in his mind. The word of God is a mirror that tells you what is in the mind of God. The living logos. The thoughts of God. I know what God is thinking about me. That one day Joshua Selman will be a blessing to the world. That one day beyond the shores of Zaria, beyond the shores of this nation... We will do great and mighty things for the king. This is what God is thinking about me. I know what God is thinking about me. God is saying, son, I can do more with you than I've done so far. So don't you allow any pride and any apostle and all this nonsense that people use and deceive themselves. Don't let it get to you. The journey is still far. I know what God is thinking about me. That son, if you can pay the price now, the days of glory will come. You know... You people sometimes see the ministers or see some of the leaders or see our lives and you just believe. That teaching that you just lie down and God can call whom he can call. Jacob have I loved, um, Esau have I hated. Paul said, and let me correct that, I am what I am by the grace of God. Alright? He said, but this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than ye all. He said, nevertheless, it is the grace of God. Many of you like teachings on favor. I teach about it. But your concept of favor is a window to run away from the process. There is a name for you, a thief. That's what the Bible says. It says thieves and robbers are the ones who want to follow the back door. There's no following the back door with spiritual things. I tell you the truth. There are many people who are running, doing ministry now. They will carry over many dealings with the spirit. Have you ever seen a matured man with short nicker going back to primary school and sitting? Because many people are jumping the dealings of God. We want ministry. We want branches. We want to go on air. Some of you are already like that. You are carrying that mindset. You are on your way going. God has held your legs together. Tied your hands like the hands of Samson and dragged you here. He said, correct that nonsense before you become a casualty to yourself. If you fail a course as a student... You will carry it over. You just have a few months. If you fail a course as a general in the spirit, no matter how old you are, you will wear that short nicker again and sit down in that play class. That's why many people, I don't say this to condemn people, many people after they have risen, even if it is 20 years in ministry, if they must continue with God, somehow they will still go back and take those extra courses with the spirit again. So what is your hurry for? The Holy Spirit is running with you at 80 km per hour. You see one zealous person just pass at 160. You say, Lord, this is twice my size. You hold on. Very soon you see people packing his bones and his legs. He has had a casualty with something else. 
This is how people, people run. That you are called does not mean you are already sent. Listen, listen, listen. My brother, come. I called him. Have I sent him? Start going. Did I send him? But he was genuinely called. That's what a lot of believers are doing. God says, on your mark, you tell yourself, go, and you start moving. Then you get to the point where you need God's mercy, and you say, where is the one that sent me? God says, uh, where is the one that called you? I'm here. The one that sent you should respond. Hallelujah. So you see a preacher come and stand before people and say, you members are not even taking care of me. Huh? Is this what the Bible says? Please don't yoke the people. Go and meet the person that sent you. God didn't send you as a preacher to be a burden to them. God sent you to be a blessing, not a burden. If you have problems, go back to the person who sent you. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? God called the twelve disciples. They walked with him. A day came, he said, now I'm going to send you. When he sent them, all of them came back rejoicing. They said, even the demons. There was a day he did not send them. Can you remember? They sent themselves. What happened that day? There was a day they sent themselves in the Bible. See, many of you don't read your Bible to learn. You just read it for education. There was a day they sent themselves. Jesus was at the Mount of Transfiguration. And they were happy. They bring, bring the epileptic patient. <laughs> Hallelujah. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. Say, Lord, say after me, Lord, no matter what it will cost me, I will pay the price for your glory. Say one more time, Lord, no matter what it will cost me, I will pay the price for the glory. You may pay the price when you are supposed to use your 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 money and buy cake for your birthday. God tells you, go and buy a Christian book. People come and meet you and say, ah, happy birthday, nothing for us, you nothing, no, please. I plan to celebrate many more birthdays. There's nothing for now. And they look, they say, you serve, this is your God you are talking about. You just keep quiet. Hallelujah. Ladies, you may not have any other shirt, you may have only two shirts. Wash one and iron it. No problem. Keep using the money to buy the books and the Bible and cry. Some of you need to add some serious desire for your life. Go and buy tapes and CDs. You have watched X-Men. You have watched all those films. When will you stop watching it? It's acting. Say after me, acting. Wake up from sleep and start. The Bible says, wake up, thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you life. There are many people sleeping. Get materials that will help your life. You hear me say this thing every time. A day will come, you will not hear this thing the way it is like this again. The Bible says in the days of Samuel, when the word of God was cast. There is no man that would deceive me into running away from the price I'm paying for the glorious future that I have ahead. Let me ask you a question. What price are you paying? Some of you, you are not paying anything. Say, my father will pay for me. Hmm. Have you heard that song? Your father may let you down. Sing it. Whatever you want to say, he will let you down as long as it's not Jesus Christ. I'm challenging you, saints of God. When you hear me preach like this with passion, don't just laugh. Don't just laugh. We are going to pray. Lord, I want your glory in my life. And if it's bitterness that will stop that glory, I die to bitterness. If it's unforgiveness, I die to it. If you must be the one to go and apologize to somebody who offended you, I die to it. What are you willing to pay 
for the glory. It won't come cheap. The miraculous is not cheap. Somebody met me one time and said, forget it. God is everywhere. I say yes. But his manifested presence with the anointing to perform is not anywhere. And if you doubt, I will call someone who is possessed right in your presence and leave you to struggle with the person. This is not pride. It's not everywhere. The beauty of success is that not everybody will have it. That's what makes it precious. The anointing is precious because not everybody is willing to have it. Brothers and sisters, there is a price to pay. The grace of God comes to enable you pay that price. There are some cups, no matter how you pray, it won't pass you by. You must drink that cup to the last drop. But when you drink that cup, you will arise with new strength. You will arise, you will mount up with wings like the eagles. Suddenly, the things that make ordinary men fall will keep you standing. You will walk on water and find yourself moving in glory. Do you know something? When that happens, you will only need to write just one book recording your experiences and it can give you enough financial benefits that all your job, your life combined may not give you. Why? Because your experiences are a recording. See, I told you this last week that everything you are doing in the spirit has monetary value. So don't you think you are losing? Hallelujah. Because there are many of us who are like the disciples of old. You are saying, Lord, I'm coming to Koinonia every time. What is my court in this thing? Are you the only one receiving glory? I'm worshipping you every day. I'm lying down. I'm crying. What is my own in this thing? God is saying, look at This is what I'm trying to get out of you. But when he finds you, I'm telling you, listen, listen, listen. Pass the test. Tell your neighbor, pass the test. The test of death. Jesus knew that he had to die. He prayed and said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass me. Some of you will need to break away from some wrong associations. You've been praying and saying, Lord, is there another way of making all of them born again? God said, one day for now, you must leave them. There are many of you that it will cost you. God will give you dangerous instructions. Go and empty your account and sow it in the house of God. You have been binding for years. God is saying, I won't talk to you again until you do the last instruction I gave you. Tonight we are going to pray. And as you pray, many things will die in this place. Honestly. Many of you, some desires you've had. Many of you, some habits, many different things. Many of you is your mouth. That coal of fire, your own, you don't need it touched. The whole coal must be put inside and you wait there. And then your tongue is purified. Then you can speak for God. Hallelujah. Many of you have what the Bible calls a lying tongue. You exaggerate things, whether good or bad. You leave Koinonia and say 90 cripples walked. Say 90, say, huh? Tell you are 60. You, you are laughing. You need... These are the things that stop great men from being mighty. We are going to stand up. I'm saying this thing because when we start praying, don't look at me, look at God. We are not stopping soon. My desire is that for every one of us to be powerful, to be a friend of God. In the future, they will ask you, they will say, Esther, what did you do to attract the favor of God like this? You say, I will lie to you. It's the grace of God, but come, let me show you. Hallelujah. You say, ah, Pastor Jakes lives in this big house. He didn't build it. And God will just slap your mouth and say, were you there when he was fasting and praying? I asked you to fast. You said no. And I blessed him. Go and look for money and build your own. Since you think I'm stupid. Many of you think God is stupid. If God tells you leave every other thing and follow me. Let me tell you just follow him like a fool. If you can be foolish enough to follow God. You will be wise enough to enjoy the blessings of God. Ah. We are going to give all the children in this place biscuits. Protocol. Welfare. 
Is it available? Quietly just find all the children. If you have a child that's from 0 to 10 years, just lift your hands and they'll pass biscuit. We are talking about death now. You know what that means. If you are more than 10 years old, if you see any old hand that is a testimony of living long in this realm, just pass them welfare. We are going to pray. You need to die. You need to die. Many of us need to die. When you die, look at me. Criticism. You see, a dead man cannot respond to criticism again. There are many of you that are always quarreling. You are quarreling everybody in your room. And they are talking about me. I wake up by two. You are still alive to yourself, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Are you ready to pray? Rise up on your feet. I don't know how you are going to pray tonight, but you are going to pray seriously. Please, give this prayer your attention. This is for your destiny. You want to walk around, go ahead and walk around. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. The first prayer point is you are going to say, Lord, I desire your glory. I desire your glory in this mortal body. I desire your glory. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Help me, instruments. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. A realm that no demon, no devil, no power in hell can stand. I desire your glory. Oh God, show me your glory. That was the prayer of Moses. Oh God, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Beyond the things I've known about you. Come on, walk around and pray like generals. Rakate ko soprekate, man proskataya. Put your heart into this prayer tonight. Rekete posha, le cross ko preke prekete, man proskataya. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. Man ta praskete le ko posotaya. I desire your glory. That I will be a career of your glory. Are you praying tonight? Satoke posha, rekete kepa, rapaskopaya. Nothing, no one, no place. Make sure you're praying. Say, Lord, your glory. As in the days of old, show me your glory, O oh God. Show me your glory, O oh God. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. Going on here, pray tonight. Repo Shataya. Repo Kopriha. Lord, we cry for your glory. Greater levels of your glory. Of your glory. Of your glory. This is the generation that will travel until we burn the glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Are you praying? Are you praying, generals? Rakata Posa, Mam Prekete. I don't want anything else. I don't want anything else. Just your glory. Just your glory. For now, my priority is your glory, not marriage. My priority, not money. My priority, not fame, not power. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, O oh God. 
Palata Paralabasha. I don't want to be a good preacher. Show me your glory. All I need is your glory, not ministry. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, oh God. Some of you need to pray. The Spirit of God is in this place. Rekete kete raposhota mepeplos kaba na kapalia kata rakato soprekete. I want to see your glory. Show me your glory, O God. Show me your glory. Show me what is forbidden for mortal eyes to see. Take me to realms beyond the natural. Take me on a journey in the spirit. Show me terrible things. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. Finally, I pray tonight. Show me your glory, O God. Show me your glory, O God. Beyond my personal ambition. Pray. Beyond your academics. Pray. Show me your glory. I tell you, when you find God's glory, you will find prosperity, you will find fame, you will find lifting, you will find favor. Cry for the glory tonight. Lord, we mean business with you tonight. We cry for your glory. Not church as usual, not Christianity as usual. Take us to a new level, a new level, a new level of encounter. <laughs> This is the generation of them that seek thy faith. Come on, generate energy in the spirit. Make sure you are praying in the Holy Ghost. Tonight, don't be tired. This is for your destiny. This is for your destiny. This is for your destiny. As soon as Zion travel, as soon as Zion travel, show us your glory, show us your glory. I want nothing more, nothing less. Your glory. Kata kapa kata balaraba. I tell you the mighty presence of God is in this place. Your glory, we cry as a house tonight. Many of you do not know what the glory of God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Listen. The Bible says, Seeing then, Hebrews 12 verse 1, That we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, he said, let us therefore lay aside every weight. You are going to pray. Listen, this very prayer, take note. Because the Holy Ghost is going to be working on people one by one as you pray this prayer. Listen, you are, as you pray this, you will die to many things. Are you listening to me? The power of God is in this place. You will die to many things. For many of you, as you pray, you will find out that that loss will lift like a spirit from you. Some of you, that prayerlessness will lift. That anger, 
so listen in the next few minutes if you want to walk at whatever just is you and god forget that you came for koinonia tonight instrumentalist help me i need you to help me i need you to help me are you ready now just the symbol that's all i need just the symbol just the symbol lift your voice and pray saints of god let waves drop all God. Ma prosko pekele, rapa katosa, rakata pekete leke, meko prosko pa, ma poto gote kete, reke teke leke 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 mosa, rakata poko to pekete, meko prosko to, reke teke te, esko to peke, ma poto gote, ma poto gote, rapa teke leke leke meko prosko pa, reke te, reke te, ma poto gote. And it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted, and all nations shall flow to it. And upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. Hallelujah. 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 And Moses said, If I have found favor in thy sight, show me your glory. What did Moses know about the glory of God? He didn't say make me a preacher. He didn't say make me a prophet. He didn't say give me money. He said show me your glory. Something tonight has broken in your spirit. Some of you tonight will begin your journey of total surrender. Honest surrender. 
there are some of you you don't even need somebody to lead you to Christ now right where you are you're already praying the prayer to be born again hallelujah listen we're rounding up without the glory of God we have no ministry it is this glory that causes transformation it is this glory that makes you a miracle worker it is this glory that makes you immune You are paying the price right now for the glory. These sufferings of this present time. You may look weak. You may in quotes be a failure. Your academics may not even be anything to write home about. But you watch what the glory of God can do in your life. The Bible says there is hope for a tree though it be cut down. He said at the scent of water. For some of you tonight, God has begun a walk with you that will carry you through until the miracle service. It's a dealing of the spirit. You cannot stop. It's a fire that has been ignited in your spirit. You will go back and people cannot explain what happened to you. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is what happens in Koinonia that sometimes people do not understand. How will someone just come and suddenly leave just one meeting with a degree of transformation you cannot explain it's not the man of god it's the glory of god this is why it is better for us to have only two people and have the glory than to have a stadium of people and lack the glory it is better for us to remain at the spiritual level we are and have the glory than rise to positions of greatness and fame without the glory. The worship team got it on the spot this night. I need you. Nothing. No place. That must be your decision. And that's the last prayer point tonight. You're going to say, Lord, truly. There are other things that have taken your place, but this night, I take you back to your position. There is nothing I cannot give you. Some of you need to think well before praying that prayer. Because there are things you cannot give him. Now say, Lord, finally I lay it down. Lift up your voice. Anything that represents Isaac in your life. Your fame. Your reputation. Is calling you tonight. Come on, pray. You are not yet a Christian. You can lay it down. Say, Lord, there is nothing I cannot give you. I've always been joking, but I mean it tonight. You mean all to me. I need you. I can give you my fame. My anointing can go. Marriage can go. Money can go. Nothing. Mean it from your heart. And no place. Take your place. That should be your prayer tonight. Ladies, pray. You especially. Take your place, oh God. What has taken your place in my life tonight? Take it back, oh God. What has taken your place? Take it back tonight. What has taken the fire? Lord, take it back. For many of us, our lives are Ichabod. The glory departed. When you began to chase after things, chase after money, chase after people. For many of us, the testimony of our lives are Ichabod. No more fire. No more prayer life. Your personal altar is dry. Your world life is dry. Your appetite for the things of the spirit. Tonight, let there be a reignition. 
fresh fire for his presence you used to read books you love God you spent your money buying books when did you start concentrating on clothes beyond the things that brought you glory come on pray tonight the Lord is taking his place the Lord is taking his place some of you will literally feel like fire on your chest literal fire take your place tonight oh God dethrone every idol that has stolen our prayer lives stolen our word life stolen the grace to walk in obedience restore us to the place of fire the place of passion your conversation used to be everything of the spirit but right now all you concentrate on is carnal things that have no eternal value whatsoever cry tonight and say restoration oh god this is a solemn assembly tonight God is preparing us for the miracle service and for our lives you are alone with God in the next two minutes cry to God alone forget that you came for koinonia tonight cry and say your oh, glory Lord there's no pretending it again I'm crying don't let my fire go cold don't let my love for you go cold quit chasing titles quit chasing ministry quit chasing anointing pray exalt him above every devilish association exalt him above every church and every ministry for some of you your idol is church your idol is ministry you rather disobey God and obey your pastor and obey church say thou shall have no other gods above me Tonight is calling us higher. He that beareth fruit, my father will prove. Pray just one minute and we'll round up. Come, go with me behind the veil. Come, go with me behind the veil. Come go with me Behind the veil Come go with me There is a higher realm than where you are standing Come up here that the spirit is calling tonight Come go with me Beyond the realm you have seen You have encompassed this mountain long enough It's time to step higher in the spirit You have been in this mountain long enough Come up to the sea of the spirit of God Come go with me Behind the veil Come go with me I will reference you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence. There is life 
everlasting. I'm going to make an altar call right now. There are some of you who need to run, not walk. Hallelujah. You've once given your heart to the Lord, but honestly, you know tonight in this family of faith that you need to begin a fresh journey. Or you've never made a decision for Jesus. Someone even invited you tonight. I'm just going to count three. I want you to leave your seat and come out here quickly. I want to agree with you and pray with you that you start a new experience. One. Quickly. If you're thinking about it, just remain on your seat. Two. This is my desire to honor you. As you stand here, just be praying. Don't look at me. Lord, we don't my heart is just you and God alone. Forget about who is with you. I worship you. You're talking to your king and your maker. All I have within me. Tonight is time to address those ways. I give you praise. I talk about all that I adore is in you. Those of you in front here, yeah, I like you to cry out your heart to Him. Hey, hey, hey. Lord, I give you. It's not a special number. Even my soul, Christ, like the deer pants after the water. I give you. is embracing you he's telling you we can start afresh for there is now therefore no condemnation tonight I want you to begin a journey even if you are a pastor just forget about it for now let's begin a journey talk to the Lord in one minute those in front talk to the Lord if you think there's nothing to say, go back to your seat. But if you have something to say, talk to the Lord. Say, Lord, I open my heart. Enough of church. My sister, that guy that always comes around to sleep with you, send him a text this night. Bye-bye. Go for good. I bless you. May you find the love of God. Hallelujah. Those of you in front here, I'd like you to lift your hands as high as you can lift it so that you will not forget. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I come before you tonight to start afresh. Lord, I'm sorry for my life. Tonight, take me, mold me, use me. I receive your life. I denounce every sin. 
and every weight that takes me away from God. Lord, a fresh fire upon my life. Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me. Let's begin a journey tonight. Make me a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. You will never regret this decision. You will look at me. Forget about, don't be ashamed of your tears. This is a family. This is where we all cry together. You will never be the same. Never. I assure you. You met God tonight. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to follow the ushers just in one minute. We're out of time. And they'll have your details. Hallelujah. By God's grace, we'll have time and talk with you people. We'll create time and we'll talk with you people. Counsel you. Just help you with some foundational truths. You will never be the same. I love you from the depths of my heart. And I salute you for this great decision. It takes the Spirit of God to have brought you out. Hallelujah. Appreciate them, celebrate them as they do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are worshiping with us for the very first time. I want to pray a special prayer. This doesn't come all the time, but if you are worshiping with us for the first time, please run and come out quickly. This is your first time. We want to bless you. Please, quickly, quickly, we're out of time. Appreciate them, Koinonia. Those of you who invited them, may the Lord keep inviting your destiny helpers into your life. Keep clapping, they're still coming. Hallelujah. God bless you. Keep coming. We'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Sister, two of you there, the power of God is coming on you right now as I'm talking. The power of God is coming strong upon two of you. You will never be the same. There is a fire that is coming upon both of you. I welcome you tonight. This is Koinonia. Our desire is to make sure people experience the reality of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for coming. The Lord brought you here by himself. I assure you, you will never be the same. This is not church. This is the revelation of the reality of the life of Jesus Christ. I want you to know we are going to pray for you. Hallelujah. For many of you, you will go back and be shocked at what has happened to your life. I assure you, this is a guarantee. Hallelujah. As we stretch our hands and pray for you, I'd like you to receive it into your spirit. This is not a formality. Saints of God, stretch your hands. Prophesy into their lives. We bless you with a hunger for the presence of God. We bless you with a passion for spiritual things. Let a fountain be created inside you that will make you desire God desire intimacy with the Holy Spirit whatever challenge you came here with whether it's sickness or oppression it leaves you completely whatever character flaw you came here with you you walk back a changed person your values change your appetites change complete transformation by the power of the Holy Spirit Lord bless them bless them bless them in the name of